This is what I put to a, a Crown Court judge in a speeding related matter uh, when I, I, said to, I said to the judge that what we're talking about here is someone being prosecuted for doing something that didn't actually happen. That's what's happening. And he, he just said, no, 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 this is for not giving information. Not giving information relating to an offence which didn't really happen. How can someone commit the crime of going too fast in a vehicle and not cause any harm, loss, injury or damage and be prosecuted for an offence? There is no offence. This is what might have happened. You're being prosecuted for what might have happened. That's a thought crime. The authority that we've encountered hasn't been a legitimate one. The worst thing you can do is be prosecuted and imprisoned for what you think. Because how can your thoughts, how can your thoughts actually create loss, damage or harm? We have a government that pretends to protect our interests and our so-called security when all they do is hold us in a very low security open prison. Because if we don't do what they say, whenever they say it, they automatically construe that a crime has been committed because you didn't obey their authority. Their authority. Their authority. We shouldn't have had the tyranny that we've had in the last hundred years. We shouldn't have had it. It's, it's only because of the, the, the grandness, the all-encompassing nature of the deception that they've been allowed to perpetrate it. Never before has anybody with an internet connection had access to all of the information contained in the libraries, libraries of Alexandria. But we have now, and more besides. The culture of privilege and elitism will disintegrate organically when all men and women are rightfully considered equals before the creator of all that is, all that is, all that is. The United Nations Declaration of Human Rights, in my view, is an attempt to bring the unalienable rights under statute so they can be taken away again at a certain point and to subjugate the real unalienable rights into ones that are regulated you know such as you know that, that every child shall have the right to primary school education that is an attempt to force every child into primary school education you know it's not every parents shall have the right to home educate their child or educate their child as they see fit. It's not every parent has superior guardianship rights or every man, woman and child on the planet ha has the right to a place to live and prosper in mutual cooperation and abundance. It doesn't say that. You know, the right to privacy, what does that mean? What does that mean, the right to privacy? You know, what about the right to innocence? Why isn't what the right to be presumed innocent? Why isn't that? one of the fundamental human rights mm. that they declare. What we have to understand is how this situation came about in order to understand how to construct the solution in entirely peaceful ways. Because it's been proven again and again and again and it will always be so that violence begets more violence. We've all got a different path to tread but it comes down to the same thing. Self-realization, 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 self-realization. A trust is a relationship or a series of relationships, a set of relationships that abide by certain rules that either are implied by the trust or expressed by the trust in the form of a deed. So in its very, sim in its most simplistic form, if, if I give you, if I give you a banknote now, for 20 pounds and saying I'm trusting you to keep this for me until the end of the night. If you accept that obligation you would be trustee of the note and I would be grantor of the note but you would be beneficiary of the value of the note for all the time that you held it because you would have that 20 pounds. So if you needed it for another purpose before the end of, of the time that it was in your possession you could use it as long as you replaced it and that's how property works in trust. 
if, even though it doesn't belong to the trustees, they hold it for the benefit of the beneficiaries. But who is the beneficiary in this case? Well, it would be you as trustee and beneficiary and the grantor as grantor and beneficiary because he wants his money back in the end. And it works in the same way. Uh, the, the trust known as the laws of England and Wales, um, as defined by the British Constitution, as I was saying, that trust involves the Queen or the monarch being the grantor of the rights and protections of the law for the benefit of the people. The court officials are, are the trustees, the, the judges are the trustees for and on behalf of Her Majesty of that property, the, the property being the rights and protections of the law. They have to administer it to the benefit of the beneficiaries and they're not doing it. So it's a gigantic breach of trust. And when the trust rules are breached to such a degree that there is out and out criminality going on in the courts of this country where the banks are being protected and families are being thrown out their houses when there's no enforceable debt in order to justify that. When we're in a situation like that where we've got a criminal government waging genocide all across the planet as it's been getting away with for centuries. If we don't stand up and put a stop to it, who's going to do it? The Universal Trust is the Umbrella Trust. It's the Grand Trust. It's the one that protects every single community within the Trust because what we're going to do is acquire land in every place on this planet. And we are putting this together now. 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 It's very difficult to look at the system that's been imposed upon us and, and to believe that it's, it's being run for the benefit of the people. When in actual fact, by the very constitution of the United Kingdom, if indeed the constitution is still in existence because of how EU law has been imposed upon that constitution, but in the, in the constitution it states very clearly that the rights and protections prescribed by the law of the United Kingdom is the birthright of every child and every man and woman. And what we've discovered over, over the course of our endeavours attempting to find remedy within their system is that the only remedy that's available is administrative. In other words, if the Crown or the bank or the corporation makes an administrative error, you can have proceedings against you struck out. But if you want to apply the law as it actually stands, as it is codified in statute against the banks and Crown interests, justice is never served. So because of that we realise that it's pointless being the very epitome of the definition of madness to continue with the same endeavour expecting a different result. So we decided that being myself, the grantor trustee of the Universal Community Trust and the trustees who were appointed last year, we decided that the only way forward was to create our own jurisdiction under national law and to gain international recognition for having done so as a sovereign group of peoples, a sovereign community of peoples who've come together to stand under natural law together, you know, and to trade cooperatively together, not for profit, to exchange sweat equity instead of financial instruments. But at the same time, we've managed to, or rather the universe has provided us with an opportunity to finance all of this with money from their system, with a banking system which doesn't involve usury. In other words, there's no lending involved of any nature or description. We create our own money ourselves to acquire the land and infrastructure of the trust. Take a group of consenting people from any walk of life anywhere in the world. Replace the debt-based financial systems with a usury-free permanent credit facility based upon the cooperative agreement of sovereign men and women to provide goods and services for everybody in their community free of charge, subject to mutually agreed individual needs and requirements and pursuant to a community trust agreement between each individual, the community and its sovereign trustees. Every single community that becomes a member of the Universal Trust is self-governing. Universal Community of Self-Realization and Trust Declaration. I, Freeman Michael John of Benicia, do hereby declare that the Universal Community of Self-Realization Trust has been formed for the purposes of granting 
to every beneficiary named under this declaration.